Hey everyone, a couple of news stories this week. Prince Harry has been told he's not allowed to wear formal British army dress at functions anymore. The new directive is of course an expansion on the existing rule about him not wearing German military clothing either. His grandfather, the Duke of Edinburgh, has been in a rough time as well. He's in hospital and so newspaper editors up and down the land are waiting to see whether it's finally time to send out all the commemorative magazines they no doubt edited and possibly printed years ago. Let's just hope they didn't include too many pictures of Prince Andrew. Times change after all. I did hear a discussion over lunch about whether when Prince Philip eventually passes they plan to bury him or possibly cremate him. It really put me off my Greek kebab. Also a big story here from Australia, also known as the land down under, except on Saturdays and Sundays when it's the land hungover. They've gotten into an argument with Facebook and Facebook have decided to shut down all their news services and sharing options rather than pay a new tax to benefit local news providers. People writing news, for instance, in Melbourne rather than Belarus or the Kremlin, as is so often Facebook's way. Although if we're being honest here, the main beneficiary from the payments was set to be News International and thus local Australian tycoon Rupert Murdoch. So in many respects, I can see both sides of this story. Would Facebook, for instance, be forced to hand over money to all the quote news providers, fake or otherwise, or perhaps maybe an unelected commission would get to decide what news the public could be trusted to read. It's all very 1984, although possibly 1985 would have been a better year, that's when Neighbours started and it's also when Mad Max 3 Thunderdome came out. You know, I always thought the problem with Mad Max is that, you know, if they just slowed down a bit then the cars would get better fuel economy and they wouldn't have to fight over all the petrol. Anyway, another sandy dry desert news Thursday saw NASA land a Perseverance rover on Mars, which was greeted by great excitement, although if you look at Mars on Yelp it only has a one-star review, something about lacking atmosphere. Also very bad mobile internet speeds as well, it says on Wikipedia that Mars only has 0.4G. Anyway, it's been about eight years or so since NASA last sent a rover to Mars, which is pretty impressive because I had a rover back in the day and it could barely make it to Sainsbury's, let alone get off-world. One of my hopes for this mission is it will probably once and for all prove that they did in fact send it to Mars and not to New Mexico with a film crew. You know, a combination of rain and snow currently make New Mexico look more like Newcastle, less like the sandy planet in Star Wars and more like the icy one. But best wishes to them. I saw a NASA official who said that the 2012 Curiosity rover had reminded him of when he met his wife. You know, it was supposed to last a couple months, but there, here he was, 14 years on. The technology and it's all pretty impressive, although I was a bit confused by an article here saying, quote, the software that got it to Mars' surface must not be exchanged for a software system that enables a robot to drive across the planet. Perhaps memory cards were too expensive when they were designing this thing, you know, to install both sets of software. Or maybe they just took a leaf out of Elon Musk's Tesla playbook with their constant software upgrades. I guess we'll find out in a couple of years when SpaceX launches their own mission there. Personally, I've been wondering if when Elon Musk eventually sends some people to Mars, he's going to hire a number of Muslim astronauts so they can travel to Mars and construct Elon's mosque. Alright, I'll get my coat. See you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.